morning, everyone. I am here today with our Police Commissioner Michael Harrison, our Housing Commissioner Alice Kennedy, to sign uh, City Council Bill 21-0050 into law. This bill uh, reduces the number of false alarms that the Baltimore Police Department is required to respond to before the property uh, is placed on our false alarm registries from 15 to 5. We've been allowing a culture in which our patrol officers spend 80% of their time on non-emergency uh, calls for far too long. Residents uh, throughout our city, uh, no matter where I go, consistently ask us to return our department to the days where our patrol officers are proactively in the places where they're needed, building relationships with residents and business alike, especially uh, when we are seeing the levels of violence that we see. And we will not be able to tackle uh, that violence if we do not address it from every possible angle. Uh, this bill helps up to free uh, up officer time to be redirected to responding to public safety issues and allows us to put officers where our residents need them the most, out on the street, uh, working to reduce violence and deterring violent crime. If the registered alarm uh, user fixes the faulty system, they may have the system inspected and then removed from the registry. I want to thank uh, the police department, DACD, who were integral in providing uh, valuable insight into how the system currently operates and helping determine ways to improve the process to free up officer time. This is a part of our smart policing strategy to ensure that BPD uh, personnel are focused on reducing violence across the city and complements efforts like our telephone reporting unit and 911 diversion program to optimize law enforcement resources. I want to thank uh, Councilman Conway, Councilman Costello, and Council President Mosby for helping to get us through the council uh, so that we can move forward with this uh, and building out the systems that will ensure better public safety outcomes for our residents. With that, I will turn it over to the Police Commissioner for a few words. Mr. Commissioner. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. This has been a long time coming. This is also a national best practice, something we should have been doing a very long time ago, but here we are. We want to make sure we reduce the amount of time officers are spending on non-emergency calls so that we can free up time and put that free time back into deployment strategies that allows us to be visible on foot patrol so we can check businesses, engage with community members, all the things the people of Baltimore have been asking for for a long time. This is one step further in our smart policing initiative that gets us there. So I want to thank our mayor, I want to thank our our council members, I want to thank our community members. We've talked about this all over town and they have supported this and I want to thank them as well. And at this time I'll turn it back over to our mayor. All right, thank you much. I will now actually sign the bill. Thank you, sir. Good luck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Anybody? Ma'am, go ahead. You first. What? Oh. I have a question. Go ahead. I'm like, who is that? Is it Lexi? Hi. Hello. Um, how are you? I, I, I wanted to ask about the um, security pass that broke down. Mm -hmm. Did you So I guess you guys should direct that to the downtown partnership. As we told you guys uh, multiple times this week, it's about a part of their uh, consistent funding for uh, public safety deployment downtown. We, uh, for us, we continue to have our police resources deployed wherever they needed to be. Okay, so do you feel like it was successful? Again, you should ask the folks who are funding it. Uh, you should ask them, the folks who funded it. We are focused on making sure that not just uh, downtown is safe, we're focused on making sure that we are uh, making our police officers be where they need to be across the city and we're going to continue and when you're talking about uh, squeegee incidents in particular to work with our squeegee work group and others. We're continuing to hire people. The police department is continuing to investigate uh, and hold people accountable for any actions that happen. And we're going to be working with our co collaborative as we come back and they come back to me about how we're going to work together, business, community, philanthropic, government, everyone to help to resolve the issue. Do you think it will continue? Will we get more? I can't speak to what anyone else can does, Alexa. Next question.
So uh, right now, uh, it has to happen 15 times before it actually goes on to the registry. We're reducing that to five, which is still a lot more times than our even surrounding jurisdictions who are at three. So when you think about that, think about that happening consistently over and over in the city, and we're sending police officers lights and siren to something that we know is ultimately going to end up being a false alarm. And I'll let the police, police commissioner talk more about how many times we see it now, but this is what we're trying to do is significantly reduce that, have a more efficient use of our resources so that they can do the things that our residents want them to do. Sir. Thank you, sir. I, th I think the number of calls annually is somewhere between 14 and 18,000 a year. And we see officers on those calls somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes per officer. So when you think about the amount of time we're spending on calls that are not crimes, not emergencies, as a matter of fact, I think above 99% of the false alarms are actually false. They're not burglaries. That time could be better used spent in other patrol strategies. And that's, that's the point of this bill signing. So uh, we'll be working in terms of uh, with the police department in support of this. Um, we manage the alarm registration program, which actually we're in the process of updating just that alarm registration portal for residents so it's easier to use to just register their alarms. And then we'll be working on uh, monitoring with the, um, the false alarm registration once they get to that five uh, number and supporting in that and uh, working to make sure that those are uh, logged appropriately. Uh, detectives are working with members of the state's attorney's office and that the answer to that question is forthcoming. We don't have the answer to that question now. What we can tell you is that we are working with our state's attorney, attorney's office uh, to make sure that justice is appropriately served. Alex, and I'll just jump in on that one. I think for me, and I think I said this to your counterpart, Keith, uh, earlier this week, uh, the, re the reality is this. Uh, we all know that people have the right to own own a gun, but when you are not handling that gun in a responsible manner and this ends up that we lose a child's life at the hands, accidental or whatever, the Texas have figured that out, of another by another child, then the adult has to be and should be held responsible. <laughs>